When you're preparing to buy a home, there's some costs that are gonna be incurred during that process. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few of those things, and one of those is gonna be your closing costs, okay? So as a buyer and you're going to purchase a home, you're gonna to need to budget about two, between two and four percent, basically, of the purchase price is gonna be your closing costs. Those are gonna be fees on top of your down payment that you're gonna to need to pay in order to get the loan closed, in order to pay your, your escrow for your uh, insurance, title and closing fees, and, and everything else associated with the closing of the property, right? Another thing you need to be account for is your down payment. Now that's gonna be dependent on what type of mortgage you get. Now, if you happen to be a VA, you may be putting 0% down. If you go FHA, you're gonna be putting 3.5% down. And if you go conventional, you can get that as low as 3 to 5%. Most of the time though, conventional, you're gonna see people put 20% down because if they don't, they're gonna have what's called PMI, which is like mortgage insurance, which is something you don't wanna to have to pay if you actually have the money to put 20% down. Another thing to think about when it comes to the cost of buying a home is going to be your appraisal and your home inspection. These are kind of separate from your closing costs because you actually pay those out of pocket before you ever close. Think about it this way. You schedule a home inspector inspection, the inspector goes out, you've gotta pay him for going out there because what happens if the deal falls through and you don't close? He can't wait till closing to get paid just in case that deal may not go all the way through to closing. Same thing for the appraisal. The appraiser gets paid on the front end. They're, that way in case the deal doesn't go all the way to closing, they've been paid for their services. So you've heard about a home warranty and you're thinking about getting one for the new house you're buying. This is something typically that you may be able to ask the seller to pay for when you're writing your offer, but a home warranty is gonna cover basically your refrigerator, your HVAC, you know, all the mechanicals of the house in case you have an issue in that first year of home ownership you are able to call the home warranty company and they're gonna send out somebody. Typically there's a, there's like a, a f what's it called? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I think my brain just committed suicide. I, I can feel it bleeding. It's called a trade fee. And what that is, is basically like a copay. You're gonna pay a, a set dollar amount, usually 75 bucks to be able to have that vendor come out and take a look at the issue. The most common ones we see is usually something to do with the air conditioner. And what you do is you pay 75 bucks, they come out, they do the work, and then they send the rest of the invoice back to the home warranty company. These are a great thing to have if you're a first time home buyer and you don't have a lot of cash after the sale, after the purchase of the property. So it gives you a little bit of protection, a little bit of insurance, if you will, on that first year of home ownership. What are some unexpected fees that occur most often in the first year of buying your house? Honestly, it's usually something random, like a like the most costly stuff is like a broken pipe. You know, it's stuff that you never really would see, but like the, all the little nitnoid stuff, like the typical little stuff, it's usually that's part of the you know, it's part of being a homeowner. Like people don't call me and tell me, hey Mark, my door lock stopped up in the bathroom, like well, good, like, I'm sorry, fix it. Like, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but like, I will hear about like if a pipe burst or something like that, because obviously that's pretty, the damage is gonna be pretty extensive with something like that. So inspections are done, now it's time for your appraisal. An appraisal is when an appraiser comes out to the house to justify the selling price for the bank to make sure that the bank is actually gonna lend on a home that's worth what the sale price is. That's the bank basically protecting their investment into your property. So when an appraisal is done, he's gonna go and look at comparable homes that have sold in the area to make sure that this home is worth what you are under contract for. When that appraisal comes back, the bank will basically sign off on it. But a couple things can happen if that appraised value isn't, doesn't, isn't justified by the purchase price. And what can happen at that point is, the buyer, you the buyer, can actually bring more money to closing to make up that difference. 
okay? The seller can drop their price to match the appraised value. A combination of the two, seller drops the price, the buyer brings a little bit of money, or sometimes the deal actually goes completely dead and you have to go back on the home search again because that gap is so big between the appraised value and the actual sale price that there can never be a meeting of the minds. You're not willing to come up, the seller's not willing to come down enough to make it all work. There is a huge misconception when it comes to down payment when purchasing a home. There's a, I hear a lot of talk. People say, oh, I can't buy a house. I need 20% down. I need 20% down. Bogus. You can buy a home for as little as 3.5% down if you go FHA. There's all sorts of different loan options out there based on your credit score, your um, ability to purchase, your debt to income ratio. So scratch the whole idea that you have to have 20% down to buy a home, because that's just not true. One of the things you have to consider when you're purchasing a home is, is the home in a flood zone? Well, there's no rhyme or reason how the flood zone map actually works here, especially here in Florida where we're at. I could have two houses sitting side by side one house need, is required to have flood insurance because of the lender, and the house right next door is not required because a lot of times it's based on the elevation of the home. So if the one house is built up a little bit higher, they may be out of that flood zone. So when it comes to purchasing a house, people always ask me, Mark, is it safe to buy the house because there's flood insurance required? Well, like I said, it all depends on the zone of where it's at and what it's required. But there's also a big myth myth conception about flood insurance. Flood insurance, some of the policies are only like 400 bucks a year, right? Like that's actually not a bad thing to have as a safety net anyway, to make sure you've got flood insurance. But some other policies, they could be astronomical based on the location of the property and the likelihood that a storm and water could run through that particular area. So you always want to make sure you're looking to see what flood zone it's in and making sure you always get a flood quote from an insurance company before you make an offer or as you're making an offer on that property. Yo, Mark, what's a contingency? A contingency is basically a term or a condition that must be met in order for the contract to go through. For example, there could be contingent upon the home inspection, right? So on a, the home inspection is gonna have to be acceptable to the buyer or else the offer would be pulled back. You have, may have a contingent on the sale of a home. So if you're a current homeowner and you have to sell your home in order to buy the next home, but the great house just came on the market and you wanna put an offer in, you would have, that offer would be contingent upon the sale of your current home. Now, over the last couple years in the crazy market we've been in, contingent offers are very weak compared to that homeowner that's coming in, or that buyer that's coming in to buy a home for the very first time, and they have no house to sell, they could close in, as soon as the lender can close and they can move right in. Think about the other guy over here who's gotta wait for that buyer to come along. It just weakens your offer when you have a home sale contingency. Is there a good or bad time to buy a home? The best time to buy a home is when you are ready to buy a home, right? There's no bad time. Is there more inventory typically in the spring? Yes, for our particular market, we have a lot of military that get orders and they're usually leaving in the spring. So we tend to have more inventory in the springtime than we do in the fall. But that also means there's more competition in the spring, right? When if you wait till the fall to buy a home, there's gonna be typically less homes on the market, but those sellers may be more willing to negotiate with you because there's not as many buyers out looking for homes. So there's advantages to both. You just have to do whatever is best for you and your family.